tale that I'm about to tell? The tale that I'm about to tell is about a race that lives at the back of the North Wind. And that race is a mighty warrior race, both men and women. And among them, the horses are their companions of their hearts. In the time of King Antaeus, their mightiest king, God born himself. A child was born to him. And this child was perfect. She was beautiful. And as they held her in their arms, they said she needs a strong name, for she is God born. And they named her Alexandra. Now, Alexandra passed seasons, and she remained beautiful <coughs> and quick and cunning, but not too tall. And Antaeus and his wife said, she'll grow, we have hope. She'll grow, she'll be the warrior we've dreamed of. And in her 15th summer, when it came to the choosing of the horses, Alexandra was standing next to her father. And her father looked, and her head came up no further than his sword belt. He saw his wife. They looked into each other's eyes. They filled with tears, but Lexandra strode out amongst the herd. And in the herd was a filly, also small, beautiful, quick, and cunning. Lexandra looked at the filly. The filly looked at Lexandra, and a thousand devils leaped between them in their eyes. And from that day on, one was not seen without the other. And Alexandra's mother would frequently, someone would say, where's Alexandra? And she would say, oh, she and the filly are off somewhere. If they don't kill each other, they'll be home for supper. <laughs> so, in Alexandra's 16th summer, the Persians came. The Persians weren't after the land. They were after the honor of defeating this mighty warrior people. They were after the honor of making these warrior women slaves, and after the honor of being mounted on these horses and enslaving them. And Antaeus called Alexandra to him, and he said, Alexandra, it's time for war. And child, you cannot be in the van. You must be behind the lines and caring for the wounded. For you and the filly, you're too little. It would cause a breach. And one soldier would come through, and then another and another. And Alexandra said, Father, I am a soldier. I will do as I am told. So all the first day of battle, Alexandra rode back and forth. She was burying water. She was pulling the wounded out of harm's way. And as the sun went down, it seemed that perhaps they had won the day. And then the howling started, and the fireballs filled the night air. And the ridge that they were standing on became a holocaust. And still Alexandra was pulling her warriors out of the way. Still Alexandra continued to do what her father told her to do. But there was no place to run for safety. And then Alexandra looked and saw that the fire never went where it had been before. And so quickly she kicked the coals. And the grass caught fire. And then she and the filly came into the middle of it and said, here, here is safety. And her father's cavalry was saved. But as they stood in that circle, they looked below at the eyes of the Persians, like hungry animals glinting in the firelight. And King Antaeus looked at his wife, who was mounted next to him, leaned over, kissed her cheek, and raised his arm for a last charge. And just then, he saw confusion in the ranks of the Persians, and confusion in his own ranks. And he looked, and there, 200 feet high and 100 feet wide, was the shadow of a mighty warrior with their spear raised. And the Persians backed off, and they were afraid. And Antaeus looked around, held up, dropped his arm, rode amongst the Persians, and cut them down. And as it began to get light, one last Persian, threw one last spear, and Alexandra and the filly crumpled and died on the ridge. For Alexandra, 
had used her quickness and cunningness to use the shadows and the smoke and the fire and the fear and frighten the Persians. But just as the cavalry set up a morning cry, they looked up, and there was a mighty shout. And it was Lexandra, 200 feet tall and 100 feet wide, rise, jumping over the rising sun and into the stars where she stands guard to this day. Mm-hmm.